Hello, how's everybody doing today? Well, today we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to use a little Lightroom and a little bit of Photoshop. If you're not familiar or too comfortable with Photoshop, don't worry. This is an easy job and you can follow along and replicate it without any problem. What we're going to be doing is applying the Orton effect to a landscape photo. Now, this effect was developed by a photographer named Michael Orton back in the mid-1980s, and what he would do is take two photographs, two negatives, and blend those together. One was sharp and one was uh, out of focus, and he would blend them together to make a different kind of contrast and focus effect, uh, giving the picture kind of a light glow ethereal effect. Well, we don't need to use negatives anymore. We can do that in Photoshop. So we're going to start out with uh, in Lightroom, and we're looking at a, a landscape photo, a photo I took in uh, Tennessee. And we're just going to do just the basic corrections that uh, I always use. And I'm going to use the auto, and then I'm just going to make a few changes, maybe to the highlights, boost up the exposure a little bit, add a little vibrance. I'm going to add just one effect with our mask. I'm going to put uh, just a stream of light starting off the canvas here. And I'm going to click, hold my wide, make my brush bigger, hold my shift key down and click again. You can see the area that we're affecting. I want to bring it, the exposure up just a little bit as the sun comes across the trees and add a little color to it more like that. All right, so as you can see, I'm not doing a lot of changes in Lightroom. Uh, one more. Let's crop out this tree over the side here. All right, so we have our picture uh, as we would like it. And if you wanted to spend more on the photograph and get a little, a little better in Lightroom, then that's fine too. But for the sake of time, we're just going to say done. At this point, we want to go into Photoshop. So we're going to go to Photo, Edit In, like uh, Adobe Photoshop. You can also right click on the photo and go edit in Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop. And the first thing we want to do anytime we're working in Photoshop, because remember, this is a destructive process. We want to go over to our background layer, our main la layer, and we want to duplicate it. Now we can do that by dragging it down to the plus here, but the shortcut key is command J and it automatically creates a new layer. The next thing you want to do is we want to make sure we click on layer one and we're going to call this our blur layer. Like this. And we want to go up under filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And at this point the, the blur that I like is about whatever megapixels my camera uh, is using. So mine is about a 40 me megapixel so that's what I'm going to stick with just right around 40 and, and don't worry about it looking too blurry we're, we're going to take care of that and once we have our blur set we're going to click OK. Now let's go back to our layer over here and we're going to grab our opacity and we're going to bring it down to about 20 percent somewhere in there and here's where you get to kind of adjust how blurry you would like it to look. So I'm going to stick it looks like around 28 percent. Now at this point I want to add a new layer and we want to add a curves layer. So I'm going to go down here to the new adjustment layers right down here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to grab curves. Now at this point it's going to get a little crazy but don't worry because everything will work out in the end. But we want to go into our darks. and You can see this is our, our uh, luminosity curve. And we're going to grab our darks which is about right here and we're going to pull them down. We're going to pull them way down. It's going to look kind of scary. All right, once I have my darks there, now we're going to affect our lights. And again, don't worry about what it looks like. We're going to take care of that. We're going to click on the line right in our middle of our lights here, and we're going to bring the curve up. We're going to make some scary looking S curve. All right, now that we have that in place, what we want to do is we want to clip this layer to the bottom layer or to our blur layer. Now when we say clip, that means I want the effects we made here to only apply to this layer and no other layer. And to do that, we're going to hold our Option or Alt key, depending on what you're using, a Mac or a PC. 
hold the Option or Alt key down, and you're going to hover over the corner of this curves layer. And when you see that little icon, you're going to click once. And as you can see, it is applied. This little curve here, this little arrow, has applied it to this layer. And as you can see, our picture looks entirely different. So it's applying this curves layer with this mask to the blur layer. It looks a lot better. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to change our blending mode. And we're going to change it to Linear Dodge Add. And the Linear Dodge Add Blending Mode only affects the colored pixels. It doesn't really affect the black pixels. And when we use a Linear, a linear Dodge uh, layer or uh, blend mode, the only thing it really uses to affect that kind of mode is the fill. Opacity really is not what you want to use on a Linear Dodge. So we're going to grab the fill and we're going to bring it down so we don't get quite as much effect. All right, so we're down at 20%. And really and truly, uh, on the linear dodge, the fill is usually between like 5 and 20% to get your best effect. So there we go. And that's our Orton effect right there. Now, what I also like to do is I like to kind of uh, address some of the lighter areas and add more contrast because it's looking a little flat right now. It needs a little more contrast. So what I like to do is I like to put another uh, adjustment layer on and I like to use the levels. So here we have our levels and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, adjust my mid-level right here. I'm going to bring that over just a little bit. Out like that. What I'm looking for is, are these areas of light. I want to address those areas of light and, and this, this adjustment. So once I have it about where I like it, I'm going to close this level. And you can see that uh, it is affecting, because we have a white mask, it affected the whole picture, the whole photograph. But I don't like to affect the whole photograph, I just wanted certain areas. So what we do is we're going to paint with black, and that is over here. So we want to make sure our top level is black. And we're going to paint, so we want to use our paintbrush. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint black over this mask so we can bring out the areas with more light. Because right now, remember, we're covering this whole layer down here, these two layers, with our, with our um, effect because the full effect is applying, is coming through because we have a white layer. So now that we have a black brush, I'm going to change my flow to like 20%. I'll say 25. And flow is how much paint or how much do I want to affect each area when I put one brush stroke across it. So now that I have, I'll make my brush a little smaller. Now that we have our paint color with our brush, and our flow, I want to start painting in those areas where I want more light. And what basically what it's doing is letting everything that we had on this layer apply as we put the back black paint on it. I'm just going through and wherever I want more light, I'm just painting it in. As you can see, everything's kind of lighting up. And every time I hit that area again, it puts 20 or 25% more of my effect. All right, so I'm not going to get crazy with this. But now if we turn this layer off and on, off and on, you can see that this was before we put the effect on. Then we applied the effect, and where you see the little black marks here, that's where we took it away, just in certain areas. So that allows us to get more contrast in the photograph by having different areas of light show up. After you have everything that you need done on this photograph in Photoshop, you're going to go back to File and Save. And what it's going to do, as you can see right here, 
in the bottom left, it's saving the photograph. And once it saves it, it's going to drop it back into Lightroom. If we go back to Lightroom, you can see it saved it here next to the original photograph. So here's our original photograph. And here's our new one with the Orton effect applied and with our adjustments in the light. Now the Orton effect is usually used on photographs that have uh, large areas of light so that the contrast or the Orton effect can be applied, uh, putting that ethereal effect on it. It's really not an effect that you should be using on all your photographs. It should kind of be used judicially, judiciously. But when you find a photograph you think it will apply, it's just a really nice effect to put on your photograph to make it a little more eye-catching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, learned a little bit something about Photoshop. And if you have any questions, be sure and let me know. I'll be glad to help you out with any of this. You guys have a good day. I'll talk to you soon.